Welcome to day 19 of my A4 Advent calendar. In this series of videos I show you in 24 days how to program the A4 APIP microcontrollers. So let's see what's in paper bag number 19. Okay, so here we have the sensor module here. This is a LM75A temperature sensor which is controllable um, over I2C. So the topic for today's video is how to use the I2C master on our Mega microcontroller and how to access or read out the temperature of this LM75 temperature sensor. Okay, so first let's talk a little bit how I2C works and how it is implemented on our Mega ADA PA microcontroller. So therefore I will jump into the datasheet of the AppMega ADAPA microcontroller. And the first important thing to notice is um, Atmel or Microchip doesn't name I2C, I2C, they say two wire interface. So TV, TWI is the abbreviation. But the protocol is just the same as I2C, it's 100% it's compatible, it's just a different name. So how does I2C works? Basically we have two pins, we have a data pin SDA and we have a clock pin SCL. The clock pin is always driven by the master. The data pin can be bidirectional, depending if it's a, a read or a write ongoing. By default, if no transaction is on the bus, so if the bus is on idle, both data lines are pulled high over a resistor. So in idle, SDA and SCL have a high level here. Now let's say our master wants to access the bus. Then it will generate a start condition and the start condition is just um, meaning it pulls SDA low. Okay? And then the clock start and the clock starts too here. And then first every device in I2C has an individual I2C address. So first thing to do is the master has to tell which device it wants to access. Therefore the first six or for first seven byte to write out is the address of the I2C slave. And the eighth bit of this transfer is a read write bit. So if the controller wants to do a write, the last bit will be zero. If the controller wants to do a read, the last bit will be one I think. And then if there is a device out there with the address written out by the master, this device will send an acknowledgement to say, yes, hello, I'm here, you can do the read or write transfer now. And then, after the address phase, we have a data phase. So in the data phase, the master generates the clock and on the right, the master drives the data byte wise out, which the master wants to write. And after one byte, um, the slave has to acknowledge the data. In case um, the master wants to do a read, um, the slave will drive out the data here on the clock edges given by the master and the master will send the acknowledgement. And that's basically how I2C works. So let's take a look at the pins for I2C. So here is the pinout of our AppMega microcontroller and we can see Part C, pin 5 is the serial clock and part C, pin 4 is the serial data um, pin. Okay, and which registers are there for um, accessing I2C? So let me jump to the register section here. So where is the two-wire interface? Here it is. Let's go to registers. So the first register is a bit red register and you have to know I2C normally uses some standardized um, speeds, so 100 kHz, um, 500 or 400 kHz and 1 MHz are the default frequencies, but normally it also works with something in between. And we can set the a prescaler from our clock generator over this bitrate register. And we have this two-wire control register. So here we have, for example, pin zero is to enable interrupts. Then, <coughs> sorry, then bit two is for enabling the two-wire interface. And then we have some control bits. So for example, if we want to send a start condition, we would have to set bit five. If we want to send a stop condition, we have to set bit four. And yeah, that's about it. There are some more bits, but 
we don't care for now. Then we have the two wire status register. So these pins up here are bitrate prescalers, but we won't need them here. And the upper, so the upper bits from seven down to three are the two wire interface status. And depending on our last action, we will get a status status information over these bit fields. So let's say if we um, have written out an address, we and everything works fine, so the slave acknowledges the address, we can read out here a code for, okay, the address was trans, um, transmitted successfully and the slave acknowledged it. But for example, if an error occurs, let's say there is no slave and there is no acknowledgement, we will see a status code in here which tells us, okay, the transmission was successful, but there wasn't any acknowledgement. So after each um, transaction, we have to check this two-wire status register to see if our operation was successful or not. Okay, then we have the two-wire data register, and this data register here, um, if we want to write our data, it could be data or the address, we have to write it into this register and then it will be shifted out. And if we do a read, the data which was received will be in this data register here. And then, in case um, we want to use the two-wire interface in slave mode, we can, f we can set the slave address over this two-wire slave address register here. And then there is also a address mask for the slave address, but yeah, we won't need this for today. Okay, so this is these are the registers for um, programming the two-wire interface. And here in the data sheet, let me go down here a little bit. Yeah, <clears throat> we can even find a description how to generate everything and how to do such a transfer. But you see, we have seven steps to follow. So this is quite a lot and I want to keep these videos quite short. So today is the first time I will use a pre-built library for using I2C. So here on the internet on GitHub I found this I2C library and I want to use this to show you or to implement or to access my um, LM758 temperature sensor. Okay, so now but before we do this, let's look at the wiring. So the wiring is quite simple. Here we have our microcontroller, here we have our temperature sensor, we have power for microcontroller and sensor, and we're just connecting the serial clock to serial clock and the serial data to serial data of this pin. We don't need any pull-ups here because there are some embedded on this board and we can even turn on the pull-ups here in this microcontroller. And the temperature we will send out over the sewer to serial adapter, so we, then it will be printed on a serial console. Okay, cool. So let, now please give me some seconds to do the wiring here on my breadboard and I will be right back. Okay, so I've done the wiring. So here we have our LM75 temperature sensor and back here we have our USB to UR adapter. So now everything is set up and we can start writing the program. Therefore, let me navigate into my A4 advanced calendars folder here. And as a template for today's video, I will use the ADC because there we already have functions set up for sending out a floating value over UART. So I will create a new folder, I will call 13 i square um, c master lm75. And let me cd into this here. And in the make file, let's check if I have to change something here. No, this looks good. Yep, I will have to change something, but I will do this later. So now I will navigate into my temp folder and I will just clone this Git repository here, which I will use. Okay. This takes a little bit of time. My internet is not so super fast. Okay, but now it's done. And now let's go back here. And what I will do now is I will copy the library folder, which is um, the two wire interface folder into my current folder and I have also to copy the license into the library folder and I will create a readme here where I tell um, two wire interface library um, for E4R controllers and Let's say the copyright 
um, owner is um, this man here and um, let's add a github link and by doing so we have fulfilled everything the license says this is the MIT license so we have to name um, the original author and this is okay and we have also copied the license into this folder so this should be okay in terms of licenses okay and now with this let's look what's inside this two wire interface library so we have a header file with the functions we will use and we have a source file and now let's open up the source file here so I'm looking for the init function so here we are initializing um, the two wire interface and here is something important where we are setting the bit rates so here it checks which frequency we want to use and it sets the prescaler the problem is here are 60 mega, uh, 16 megahertz crystals used but we have a 20 megahertz crystal so we have to change this value here to 80 this to 30 and this should be 50 here and then it should be okay for our 20 megahertz crystal so let's check if we have to change some pins so here the pins are defined but this is okay because our serial clock pin is pin 5 and the serial data pin is port c pin 4 so this is okay good now we can um we have to make some changes here in the make file so now we have two sources. First we have our library, so two wire interface, two wire interface master.c. This is the first source file we want to compile, and then we have the our main function. The target should be lm75. Okay, and then we need an include folder to tell the compiler where the include files are. Therefore we have to pass the minus i option and our folder is tvi, and we have to add this here. Um, to the compilation so I will just add the variable include here and that should be it okay cool so now let's edit the main function so first we have to include our new library so to wire interface master .h. then here is everything we need for the UART here we have the main function here we are initializing the UART we don't need the ADC here and down here I can delete these three lines here too but the rest is okay we need a floating um, variable I will call temperature yeah but the calculation will be a little bit different this will be temperature too here we are converting the float to a string and then we are printing out the temperature over UART degree okay and we're doing this every half or well, let's do it every second this is okay too okay cool so now we have to use the library therefore let me open up the header file where we can find all the um yeah all the functions we will need so first we need to initialize um the two wire interface therefore we um, let me add a comment in it two wire interface and therefore we have to call the function to wire interface we have to pass the frequency we want to use i will just use 100 kilohertz it's slow but it's okay and the second value here is if we want to have a pull up yes i want to so i will set this to um one okay and now we can use it so to get the temperature we have first to write out the value zero which is the register in the lm75 we want to access and then we have to read back um yeah we have to read back the temperature and the address let's maybe de globally define the address define lm775 address the i square c address of this temperature sensor is 48 hexadecimal this is hardwired over some resistors to it so yeah this is okay okay cool so let's do our first um first i square c transmission so first we have to do a write master transmit so our address is lm75 address then um, 
oh we need a data pin here or we need a data variable pointer data pointer here so let's do register address and this address is just zero then let me pass this rec address here okay then the next value is the length and this is just one byte we want to send and the bool repeat start no i don't want to repeat start so i will set this to zero okay now let's do the transmitting or the receiving therefore i will call to wire interface master receive first i have to give it the address then i have to pass um Oh, the target where it should be stored, this should be stored in raw, the raw variable. Now we want to get two bytes back and that's it. Okay, and now we have to um, calculate the temperature. So therefore I will set raw to raw and the lower byte and I will shift this to the right by three. And I have to or it with um, yeah with raw shifted to the left by 13 and this will give us the raw value and to get the temperature what we have to do is we have to set the temperature we have to take this raw value here and multiply it with 0 0.125 and this will just give us the temperature and then we can print it out Okay, so let me try to compile this program by running make. Okay, this looks good. Now let me flash it. So our name is lm75.hex. The controller is an atmega88pa. I have to give it my password. Okay, this is a little bit bigger now because we're using a library. And now let's try to open a serial terminal to get the temperature value. So here I'm opening a serial terminal. And this is not so good. Give me a second for troubleshooting. Maybe I've just um, messed up a, a wire, some wirings. Now I guess it's a different fault. I have a second um, device with a serial to USB adapter connected to it. so. Yeah, with an unplug it, screen is terminating, and now I will take the right one. So this is USB 1 normally. Yeah, and now we get, I'm getting the temperature. And if I put my finger here on the temperature sensor, we can see the temperature is increasing. Okay, cool. So that's how to access um, um, the LM75 temperature sensor by using to the two-wire interface of our, of our Mecha microcontroller. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something and I will also hope I will see you tomorrow. Bye!